What's up guys, welcome back to the Educated Bar Fly. Uh, today we're gonna do a little home bar basics episode on the workhorse spirits that I use. And truth be told, I've actually been avoiding this um, topic because everyone's gonna have an opinion about it uh, and about what I use. Um, I just wanna let you know that this is what I use. They're by no means the end all be all to the workhorse spirits. There's lots of different spirits in these categories that are good and I think that you should um, do that research or whatever but I just want to show you the main spirits that I use the one only thing that I'm missing here is vodka I don't use vodka very often there's not many vodka cocktails that I do when I do use vodka I use a variety of different vodkas but for a very good quality you know sort of workhorse vodka Aylesbury Duck from the 86 company is pretty solid uh, and it's, you know, that's price point about 20 bucks. So I'm trying to pick spirits here that are going to retail from about 16 to 23 bucks. Um, so that they're, you know, if you guys don't know what you, what I mean by workhorse spirit, it's something that you can use and make a lot of cocktails and readily uh, replace without breaking the bank. Um, there are a lot of much more expensive spirits that you could use. But for me, making a lot of cocktails um, for myself and at home and for these tutorials, it's really important to find really good quality um, spirits that uh, pair well with the cocktails that I'm making uh, and that are readily uh, replaceable. So the very first one that I'm going to talk about is um, Old Overholt Rye. Old Overholt Rye is just awesome quality rye. It is the oldest distilled whiskey in the country um, and it is just really solid. I try to pick something that is like very representative of its category without being very nuanced in flavor because when you add bitters and sugar and citrus and whatever other elements you're putting into your cocktails, you're going to lose those, um, you're going to lose those uh, complexities in the flavor profile. So it's really good to get something that's just representative of what it is. The other uh, one that I would recommend that I don't have up here would be Rittenhouse Rye. Rittenhouse rye is a hundred proof bonded rye. If you don't know what bonded bonding is, bonding is a government designation that came around in the 1800s that basically signifies that the product that is being bonded is a uh, hundred proof from one single distillery from one growing season. Uh, it's hundred percent what it purports itself to be. Uh, I, as you know, as you've heard me say, I really enjoy uh, higher proof spirits. Uh, I think that they pair well with a lot of better flavors and you get a bigger, like just a bigger flavor in your drinks. And if you pair them with the right ingredients, they are sublime. So that brings me to the next one, which is a Evan Williams bottled and bond bourbon, another hundred proof bonded bourbon. Um, just very representative of what it is. The Evan Williams, a the regular Evan Williams black label is also really good. If you want something that's not so high proof, um, uh, so for my scotch, I chose the, the famous grouse. Another one that I really like is called Banknote. Um, this is just good blended scotch that isn't super smoky. It's a little bit sweet on the finish. It's got those dark, dark fruit flavors in its profile. Uh, and it just goes really well with, uh, cocktails when you're adding a little bit sweeter elements. Um, this one's going to be probably a little bit more expensive. It's pr at about $18 at Trader Joe's, $23 to $25 at BevMo, uh, Tullamore Dew. Uh, Tullamore Dew is um, my choice for Irish whiskey. Uh, you could also go with Jameson, which is going to be a little bit cheaper. Personally, I like Tullamore Dew a little bit better. I don't make that many Irish um, whiskey cocktails, but Irish Old Fashioned is a staple. Um, Irish Coffee is a staple. Uh, and Cameron's Kick, which is Scotch and Irish whiskey. Uh, and this just goes good in all of it. Um, I come back here to my beef eater, which actually reminds me of some comment some dude left a while ago that was like, step number one in your tutorial, take the beef eater and pour it out. That's really unfair. Beef eater is great, very classic London dry style uh, gin. And the other one that I would say is really good, all right, is the 86 company makes uh, a gin as well called Ford's Gin. Uh, and the uh, brand ambassador, uh, Simon Ford, who created Ford's Gin and is a partner in the 86 company, uh, also was the brand ambassador that was tasked with bringing Beefeater back from the dead uh, when it was just kind of 
thought of as an old tottering old man's gin and he kind of revived it and now uh, you see it in a lot of wells. It retails at about 16 bucks for a fifth or a 750 milliliter bottle and it's great. The next one up is Distillor, Distillador 99 proof tequila. This is uh, just a nice workhorse tequila. It's really good quality, obviously 100% agave. Um, uh, just a really good product. It's a little bit higher in proof, which I like. And it just pairs well with all the good tequila cocktails that I make. And then last but not least, uh, uh, Plantation Three Star is kind of my favorite light rum to use. It's just, it's a blend of three different rums um, uh, from, uh, I think Bermuda. Let me just, I'm sorry, I gotta read it guys. It's from uh, Jamaica, Barbados, and Trinidad. Sorry, Jamaica, Barbados, and Trinidad. It's a blended rum, but it's just like really, it's just a wonderful flavor profile. And it actually, the Plantation Rum the distiller of the Plantation Run is actually the same distiller that makes uh, Pierre Ferrand Cognac. So uh, I just really think that that distillery does a great job and they do uh, really, really quality product. Um, and you know, when you're making something that calls for light rum and it isn't something very specific like Gosling's or Myers or something, uh, this is going to be a good choice and it's going to be, you know, somewhere around 16, 16 to 20 bucks a fifth, depending on where you get it. So there you have it, guys, my workhorse. Um, this is what the very beginnings of your bar look like. This is by no means a comprehensive uh, talk on how to build your bar because when we start talking about how, you, how to build your bar, uh, which we will do at some point in the future, you know, we're really gonna have to start going through Amaros and Bitters and a lot of other things that you should really stock up on to just get your first kind of cocktail bar together. But as far as like the very beginnings of your spirits, and what spirits I use in, uh, in each category to create cocktails, here they are.